So we'll continue with the sec the fifth mantra. I think we had completed up to fourth. So if you remember, this is what Upmundaka Upanishad. First chapter or second chapter, first section. Okay. So the fifth mantra, two, one, five, to give the correct what you call nomenclature. So we'll chant it first. Tasma Dagnit Samidho Yasya Surya. Somat Parjanya Oshadhaya Prithivyam. Somat Parjanya Oshadhaya Prithivyam. Uman Reta Sinchati Yoshitayam. Uman Reta Sinchati Yoshitayam. Bhavif Prajaf Purushat Samprasutaha. So first just the word meanings, then we'll discuss. Tasmat, <coughs> Tasmat is from that Brahman. Agnihi, Agnihi is here, Agni is a technical word, not meaning fire, it means Swarga. Then Yasya Samiddha Suryaha. Whose light? Yasya Samidaha. Whose light? Surya is the sun. So from that Brahman, Swarga is born. And Swarga's light is the sun. And from Somat, Soma is the moon. From Somat, Parjanyaha, clouds are born. Oshadaya Prithivyam, from that plants are born upon the earth, Prithivyam. Then Puman Sinchati, Retaha. The male Puman inserts or transfers Retaha. Retaha is the semen, the male seed. Yoshitayam, Yoshi is the female. So Yoshitayam, the male transfers the seed into the female. And then Bahavif, Prajaha, Samprasutaha. Many beings are born Purushat. Here Purusha means Brahman again. So Tasmat Purushat, out of that Purushaha, Many beings are born. So to briefly remind you, we started with a description of Brahman. And then from the third mantra, Etasma Jayate Pranaha, we talked about the emergence of the universe. And now in this fifth mantra, we are talking about what? The arrival of the jivas. Okay, this is a very technical mantra. And we are talking about the arrival of jivas. So when we talk about jivas, remember that jivas are never created. So the born word has to be very carefully understood. If you remember Bhagavad Gita, what was the what was the uh, you know particular verse which talked about this? Anybody? You can't forget Gita and then expect to understand the Upanishad. So which verse are we talking about? Avyakta Dini Bhutani Vyakta Madhyani Bharata Avyakta Nidhananyeva Tatraka Paridevana Avyakta Adini Bhutani All beings are Avyaktam in the beginning. Vyakta Madhyani He Bharata. They are manifest. They are Vyaktam. In the middle, Nidhanan Eva Avyaktam. After death, 
they are again avyakt. So this is to indicate that jivas are never created. They exist in avyakta rupam, unmanifest form, before creation. So all the jivas, their bodies, their sthula shariram, their sukshma shariram, everything is in avyakta form. And here, this is the karana shariram of this thing. They, are, they remain in karana, karana shariram. And therefore, they all remain in maya. That is what is being talked about. And out of this karana shariram alone, what happens? All these thula shariram, all the sukshma shariram, which are in un unmanifest form in the karana shariram, all of them are manifested. That is srishti. So, srishti means... They are all, the, all the avyakta bodies and minds become vyaktam. The unmanifest bodies and minds, they are manifested, they are visible now. That, that conversion of avyakta avastha into vyakta avastha is what we call srishti, what we call birth. And when pralayam comes, all these vyakta bodies, all these vyakta uh, sukshma sharirams, all the vector karma, they all resolve back into maya, into the karma sharidam. And that resolution is called pranaya or death. Okay, now this verse is talking about the process by which the diva takes a new body. Now this, this verse gives a very, very brief description. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> but there is uh, Chandogya Upanishad where there is a very detailed discussion on the journey of the jiva. There is something called Panchagni Vidya. So there is a very de detailed description over there. And this is also uh, discussed in great detail in chapter 3 of the Brahma Sutras, which of course is very, very far away for us. But sooner or later, we will be doing all these in detail. This is not the right place. So I will just uh, give you a Brief outline of the discussion. Okay. What does the discussion say? And when I say discussion, I'm talking about the Upanishad, the Chandogya Panchagni with the discussion as well as the Brahma Sutra discussion. And this is very important for us because why I'm introducing it at this stage is because we should have a clear idea of what happens at the death of the physical body with a lot of, you know, uh, very mixed up ideas going around. Some told by parents, some told by sadhus, some told by other teachers, other, other darshanas. But we should know what Shastra really says. So Shastra says, at the time when, so we will start with the physical body, right? The physical body is existing for what? The physical body is existing for two things. What are they? The human being... Exhaustion of karma. Exhaustion of karma is number one. And we are talking about the human it, physical body. It's the bhogayatanam. Ayatanam, yes. I mean, that is ayatanam where the jiva sits and, and receives the palam of his karmas. But remember that Shastra says that the physical body has two very important roles. I mean, we're talking about physical body of the human being. One is that it is the only in the human body that you have a chance to work for moksha. To attain mukti. To attain, mm -hmm. attain jivan mukti. And therefore, these are the two very important ideas contained in the Shastram that the physical body of a human being, I'm talking about, is meant for one, exhaustion of karma, and number two, gives you a chance for Jeevan Mukti. Okay, so after having said that, it is meant, assuming that Jeevan Mukti is not there, has not been obtained in this Janma, then the physical body should remain how long? Until its other job is over. So exhaustion of the Prarabdha Karma, which was for which, exhaustion of which the physical body was born. So when the Prarabdha Karma is over, the physical body is no longer needed and therefore it is, therefore the jiva leaves the body. The jiva meaning the sukshma shariram plus the karma shariram because the glue which keeps 
the sukshma shariram with the physical body with the with the sthula shariram is the prarabdha karma when the prarabdha karma is over that physical body is no longer needed because the karma has been exhausted which related to that particular physical body so that physical body becomes useless it becomes like an old t-shirt and so the jiva leaves that body behind just like you throw away old t-shirt the jiva leaves his body behind why because prarabdha has been exhausted and therefore the utility of the current body is over okay now <clears throat> what is the idea so you are all advanced vedantics right you are studying upanishads so i am asking a question what is the general idea that you have what happens after the physical body is gone what happens to the jiva the jiva uh, travels the jiva uh, jiva travels it, okay it travels where leaves the this physical body first mm -hmm. depending on the karma it would travel to one of the lokas it would travel to one of the lokas <clears throat> so that i accept that depending on the karma it can go to swarga loka it can go to you know brahma loka it can go to other lokas it can come back to this world as inferior bodies also that is all said but <clears throat> the question here is when does this jiva get the next body that is decided by the karma yeah. anybody has answer to that question when does yeah. jiva get next body ravi ji may i try please please not try See what happens is suppose for example my gross body perishes my subtle body has to wait for some time till it finds the right atmosphere to be reconceived again so that I can undergo the next cycle of prarabdha. Okay, so this is the general understanding, right? That subtle body, the jiva just hangs around, you know, in limbo, waiting for the right environment. And then <clears throat> when the right environment is there, the parents come, the body comes, and you are reborn. Okay. Now this Upanishad, Kandogya, and the discussion in the Brahma Sutra, they give the correct view. And they say that is not correct. So they say, Shastram says that even as the current physical body is being disposed of, and we in Shastram, we say what it is, the Tamshan Ghat, it is the cremation. Right? You are not buried unless you are a sannyasi. So there is a cremation. And the cremation therefore is a ritual. What is the ritual for the physical body is being handed back to Ishwara? In the sense, the physical body is being handed back to the five elements, to Pancha Mahabhutani. Right? And Shastram says the old body is being now handed over at the cremation ground. In the cremation fire, the old body is being handed over by whom the jiva is handing over the useless body to Ishwara. And Ishwara here is represented by whom? By Agni Devata because Agni is the one which is consuming that body. And Shastram says that at this point itself, at the moment of cremation itself, Shastram says that Ishwara provides the next body in a minute form. Right? The, at the moment of creation, the Jiva collects the next body from Ishwara in a very rudimentary form. It is not a you know, full-fledged body. In fact, uh, it is called a Jala Shariram. Jalam Shari. Jalam means water. Right? So, it is called Jala Shariram. That is what the, and the body is not in, not in a condition for any sort of interaction. It is just, you can call it the seed form of the body, which has to actually generate itself into a big body. And this is the important point, that at the very moment of creation, handing over the old body and taking the new body is together. It's like an exchange program. You take your old t-shirt, go to one of those Theravalas outside, get the old t-shirt and get a new t-shirt. Right? So, 
Similarly, the jiva is not without a body at any point of time. The fully formed physical body, which is the current body, is handed over to Bhagavan at the moment of creation, as cremation, through the Agni Devata. Right? And Bhagavan himself, at the point, hands over the new body in that very minute, rudimentary form called Jala Shariram, and the jiva leaves with that body. Right? And as I said, the body is not in any condition for any sort of transaction. It has to become a full-fledged body. It has to evolve. And Chanyogya talks about something called Panchagni Vidya. Agni, of course, here is a, means fire. But in this particular context, and to make it understandable, you have to, you have to, you, I'll say that this jiva with his minute body evolves to the next physical body, the fully formed next physical body by passing through pancha agnis. Pancha agnis are really not agnis. They are called agnis, but you can think of them as um, processing centers. You know, it is a like a factory. There are different processing points for different things. And therefore, this jiva enters these five processing centers. They are given uh, the names of Swarga, the first processing center, Megha, the second processing center, Prithvi, the third processing center, then Purushaha, the male, is the fourth processing center, and Nari, the female, the mother, the fifth processing center, and when the jiva emerges from Nari, the lady who is the mother, that jiva gets a new fully formed functional body. And that emergence from Nari, the fifth Agni, each of these are Agnis. Swarga is a Agni, Megha is a Agni, Megha, not Medha, okay. Megha meaning what? Clouds. Prithivi, Purushaha, and Nari. And just as in, in, let us say, in a, in a factory, you know, at every stage, something is added on to the body or to the, to the object which is being processed. Here also, this is a process of evolution. To each of these uh, processing centers, when the jiva goes, he is given a new name to indicate that something has been added on. So when he enters Swarga, Swarga literally means heaven, right? He is he is the jiva. When he emerges from swarga, he is called soma. That soma enters megaha. Megaha is the clouds. And when he emerges from the clouds, he is called vrishti, the rain. Right? That vrishti enters prithvi. How? Because rain falls upon the earth. So that vrishti enters prithvi, which is the third processing center. And becomes Annam, food. Annam enters Purushaha, the male, and becomes Retaha, the semen. That is the fourth processing center. Then the semen from the Purushaha enters the Nari. And what emerges now is called Trajaha, the person with a fully fleshed body. So from from the Nari, the Jiva is born. Okay. This is the process with regard to certain certain Jivas only. I'll just clarify that. This is not a process common to all Jivas. I don't want to get into the details there. But anyway, let me give a few more details okay, so that the understanding is clear. After dropping the physical body on earth, current physical body, what happens? That Jiva gets the rudimentary body, which is called Jalam. So, taking that Jalam body, Jiva goes to Swarga. Now, this Swarga here, unlike otherwise, he is not going for enjoyment. He is also going for processing the body. And after the processing is complete, the name given to the Jiva who leaves Swarga. Who is, the processing is over. So, he leaves Swarga. He is called Somaha. Then, he enters Megaha. As I said, the name given after leaving Megaha is rain, Vrishtihi. Then he enters Prithivi, 
the name given after this process is annam food then he enters purushaha into as as retaha once he enters purushaha as annam what emerges is retaha the same in the sperm that male transfers that retaha into nari the female and what emerges is prajaha so each of these processes is looked upon in chandogya why is it called lagni because each of these processes is looked upon as a homam as a ritual and in a in a vedic ritual you know that agni is central to a vedic ritual and therefore this panchagni vidya is given in chandogya upanishad the whole process is to be meditated upon it's meant for upasana so the panchagni vidya upas vidya here the word vidya doesn't mean knowledge it means upasana so panchagni vidya panchagni upasana it is there that upasana when you meditate you are looking at the whole process of creation of a jiva okay <laughs> and if you look at it uh, the processing centers they are given different names but ultimately who does the processing only ishwara does the processing so the ishwara himself can be looked upon as panchagni saguna ishwara and that is why saguna ishwara meditation called panchagni so this is the ref background for this particular mantra okay now as i said the when a jiva leaves from this particular world with the body rudimentary body there are three paths you can take you can go to brahma loka and from brahma loka you can get prama mukti directly right and therefore for those jivas who go to brahma loka and get krama mukti this panchagni vidya route is not applicable now there are other jivas who take who go to adho the adho route the downward route they are born as lower beings maybe as insects or plants right and therefore again this panchagni vidya is not applicable because for example if the person is being born as a plant then what happens at the third stage vrishti stage when we are saying annam emerges so that's the end of it that is the food for the for the adho birth for the lower birth and therefore panchagni vidya is applicable only to certain type of people who have enough punyam to take them to heaven and that is swarga not brahma loka or even if they go to brahma loka they choose not to go to lord brahma ji and study and therefore they have to be reborn so those who have enough pun- punyam to go to the higher lokas and when the punyam is exhausted to be reborn as humans panchagni vidya this pro- process is being applicable to them so here he says look at the words tasmat agnihi samiddah yasya suryah from that brahman tasmat from that bhagavan brahman agnihi So Agni he here means higher lokas, all the seven lokas up to Brahma loka, and Samidha means bright, very bright. So Samidha, bright upper lokas, and for this Agni he, Surya, Agni Samidha can be taken as fuel also. So for this Agni he, the fuel is Surya, the wood is Surya. So Swarga loka refers to. this agni agni refers to swarga loka this is the discussion in brahma sutra so as the ankaracharya points out that when vyasacharya points out that in this particular mantra kandogya mantra agni means one of these processing centers and therefore the first agni is swarga loka first fire of panchagni vidya and then <clears throat> what did i say when that person emerges from this background has to be kept in mind this is that is not given here when that jiva emerges from swarga loka what is he called soma soma and therefore now look at the next one somat parjanya from soma the soma literally means moon okay so from moon the soma parjanya parjanya is clouds the clouds are born and <clears throat> here if you have to you know make sense of it somaha you should not take as the moon but somaha you should take as literally speaking as what 
from what are clouds born? Water. Okay. Would you like to uh, expand that? Water vapor. Water vapor. Evaporation from the evaporation oh. from the Therefore, the oh. the uh, what happens is the sun. <clears throat> that was the mention of Surya. Okay. Samidha. Fuel is Surya. Because of the sun, the evaporation takes place of water bodies all over the earth. That because of the evaporation, <clears throat> water vapor is present in the atmosphere. That water vapor you can take as soma. And from soma, when the water vapor condenses, the clouds are born. And these clouds are the second agony. Okay, that I told you. Then <clears throat> what happens from the clouds? That stage where from the cloud water, that is rains emerge, that stage is not mentioned in the mantra. You have to supply that. From the clouds, Prishti comes, Vrishti falls on the earth. So that we have to supply because that's why I give you the background. And then Oshadaya Prathivyam. From when the rain falls on the earth, when the Vrishti falls on the earth, what happens? Plants are born on the earth. So, Prithivyam Oshadaya, from earth, plants are born. Right? And this is why in Shastram, food is considered vegetarian. Oshadaya. Okay? And therefore, the Prithvi is the third Agni. Then what happens? Again, <coughs> we are, that particular stage is not mentioned. The plants are eaten by the male, by the human being. Of course, plants are eaten by both human, males and females. But here we are looking at the male seed. The retaha means the semen, the seed. And therefore, human, the male, he eats the plants. That plant which is eaten, it is offered to the digestive fire in the male's body. And that means it's a havi for the panchapranas. And that is why when you eat, you know, there is a mantra. Prana, yes, swaha. You are offering the food to the prana responsible for expiration. Apana, yes, swaha. You are offering the food to the fire responsible for the evacuation. Vyana, yes, swaha. You are offering the food to the fire responsible for circulation in the body. Tamana, yes, swaha. So the food is digested. You are offering to the samana vayu. And udana, yes, swaha. In case there is any problem in the food, Emergency functions like vomiting, emerging, taking out of the body, all these are being offered to Udana as well. Udana, of course, you also know, is the cause for the withdrawal of the Sukhshasism on death. But that's different. Okay. And Brahmane Swaha, you are offering Hiranyagarbha. So this is the this is the mantra you chant. You are supposed to chant when you eat. And that food which goes into the body, now we are talking about the male body, it becomes the semen, the seed of the, of the male. And therefore, Pumanaha, the male who has consumed the Annam, is the fourth Agni. But Chaturtha Agni is, that food is converted into Retaha, the semen. And then, that male, Finchati, he places, he inserts that semen in Yoshita, who is the female. So, she is the fifth Agni. And in this manner, now again, you have to see, <coughs> you know, he doesn't mention it here, so the, from that female, Purusha emerges and he puts it in a different manner. Bahavihi Prajaha Purusha Tampasutaha. In this manner, Bahavih Prajaha. Varieties of beings are born from Purusha. Here Purusha means Brahman again. Ultimately, from Brahman, everything emerges. Tampasutaha is born. And of course, Shastra says that <coughs> in remember that we are now talking about. The Srishti. Don't forget the context. We are talking about the Srishti because we talked about the from Ishvara Prana comes. We, we said that first the universe comes, subtle, subtle elements come, all that we talked about. So we are talking about Srishti only. And in Srishti, the Jiva birth, not mentioned here again, is supposed to follow a certain order. You know, for Devatas are born first, then activities necessary for birth of humans are there, all this. Okay. And remember that again, we do not say all jivas are born in this manner, in this Panchagni Vidya manner, because like plants, amoeba, etc., they're excluded. 
amoeba of course you know it divides and and and, and expands therefore all these things are excluded okay then there are also certain um, uh, animals or certain varieties of beings where it is not the female who gets pregnant it is the male who gets pregnant any idea you should be aware of all these things so that you know what are the exceptions to the rule sea horse wonderful sea horse is the is the uh, you know being in which the male gets pregnant so these are all exclusions but we should know what the exclusions are so that we don't mix up our understanding so that is the emergence of the jiva that is being mentioned in this mantra any questions Om Acharya Ji. Yes, please. Uh, I just wanted to ask, so uh, the background which you give about the Vrishti and the Annam and all that, so whatever the rain cloud we see, whatever the Vrishti we see, is it a jeev form that means? Well, yes. That is why Jalam, Jalam body. But remember that all those jeev forms don't necessarily end up as humans. And that is why Shankara says elsewhere that very difficult to find a human birth. Why? Because the rain can fall. For it to emerge as a jeep, as a human, it has to fall first of all on the earth, right? Rain, rain water can be on falling on the sea also. So that's one exclusion. Even when it falls on the earth, it might fall on the desert where nothing is born. That's another exclusion. So even when it falls on the fertile land, it might land up in you know a forest. So, they may, plants may be there, but not get eaten by the male. So many exclusions are there. And therefore, that's why it's said that it's very difficult to get a male birth. And Acharyaji, this uh, term, O Shadhaya, is it uh, referring to Annam? It is plants. Is yeah, plants. Okay. And that plant is, when it gets eaten by the, by the male, that converts into retaha. That is the background. Thank you. Okay. okay. Let us look at the next mantra. Mantra number six. We will chant. Tasma dracha samaya yum shi diksha. Tasma dracha samaya yum shi diksha. Yagnyascha sarve kritavo dakshinascha. Yagnyascha sarve kritavo dakshinascha. Samvat sarascha yajamanascha lokaha. Samvat sarascha yajamanascha lokaha. Somo yatra pavate yatra suryaha. So, okay, simple words, word meanings first. Tasmat from that Brahman. Rich, which is Rig Veda. Rich, Yajumshi, Yajur Veda. Samaha and Dikshaha here means uh, religious discipline. They are born. And also, Sarve Yagnya Cha. All rituals are born. Now there are two words, yagna and kratavaha. <clears throat> so I'll explain them when we talk about more detail. Right, <clears throat> right here, just at the moment, just know that yagna and, and, and kratavaha or kratavo here, both are rituals only. Dakshinaha, all types of dakshinas given. Samvatsaraha, that is the year, period the year, Y-E-A-R. Okay, Samvatsaraha. And Yajamanaha, the, the one who does the yajna, the, the ritualist, Cha Lokaha, all the worlds. And he says, Yatra Somaha Pavate, all the worlds where the moon purifies. And Yatra Suryaha, you have to add Pavate, where the sun also purifies. This is the literal meaning of this mantra. Now look at further. So, creation is being discussed again. Is The topic continues. All these things which we are talking about, remember that they appear in this world only because of karma. Because of karma alone, bodies are taken. 
and through this body medium alone we can have sukha dukha bhogaha experience of pleasure and pain and as he was remember that one of the uh, objectives we have is to reduce our papam and increase our punyam balance so that we are more comfortable in life that our living becomes easier and therefore bhagavan provide ishwara provides this method this particular method method of what increasing punyam balance and reducing papam balance so that you can have a comfortable life and vedas are symbolized as the mouth of the lord okay that we saw where in the last mantra we saw that vedas are symbolized as the mouth of the, mouth of the lord and therefore we are saying that when vedas provide you certain uh, rituals for increasing punyam it is the lord who is providing you the first line is tasmat prichah samah yajumshi dikshah and some people you are using a certain text you will find yajumshi being written as uh, the not the anuswara but there will be that half moon with a dot on top so which is pronounced gum so yajugamshi is also there yumshi yajugamshi both are the same one is a vedic pronunciation one is non vedic so tasmat from that brahman and this brahman is maya sahita brahman ishvara came the vedas all of them rik sama yajur and we have to supply here rik sama yajur is only three and we have to supply which one atharva why do we have to supply because it is not mentioned here and mundaka is a part of that exactly both reasons are there it's not mentioned here and four vedas are there and besides which mundaka is atharva veda only okay so vedas remember they came to us through the medium of the rishis and because of the rishis who have a lot of spiritual punyam they were able to receive the teaching from the from ishwara ishwara provided them in their meditation they can receive the teaching so therefore rishis are called mantra drashtaha the one who had received the teaching directly and that's why shruti because they didn't read it anywhere they were, they heard it in their meditation so shruti rishis are called mantra drashtaha and drashta of course there means not the seer it means the hearer and vedas have there are two types of vedas uh, broadly speaking one is mantra veda and one is brahmana veda so mantra vedas are uh, for example they are all rig vedas also the rig mantra are there and when mantra vedas you will find they are in metric form so you will have you will have these chandas like gayatri anushtupa trishtupa which you are all familiar with they are capable of being chanted and sama veda refers to uh, the rig veda only but in which can be set to musical notes sama veda sama means which can be sung and therefore the same veda which can, veda which can be chanted the same mantras which can be chanted as rik mantras can be sung also to music and the sama veda mantras yajur mantras are in prose form there are no, there are no rules about chanda etc okay so this is general background and therefore he says sarve yagnyah cha all rituals also come from that brahman only tasmat only all brahmans come and not only yagnya yagnya cha kritva okay so when you come to when you read any scriptural texts you will find that sometimes the word yagnya is used alone and sometimes the word kritu kritu is used kritva kritva kritu they used and yagnya kritu both are being used so both yagnya and krita are rituals okay what is the distinction uh, krita kritavaha is a yagnya which involves animal sacrifices okay so uh, there is a ceremonial or a sacrificial pole used in that ritual which is called yupa so that word yupa also you might find some of the text which we will study the so, yupa means a sacrificial pole which is you know implanted in the ground to which the sacrificial animal is tied these are not normally used but they are they were used for large yagnyas for for, for example ashvamedha yagna 
which are done by Chattuja kings. For them, there was a sacrificial pole. Okay, now where is, there is no sacrifice, and therefore that's a ritual without a yupa. The non yupa ritual is called yagna. So, to put it in short, yagnas are Vedic rituals where there are no animal sacrifices. Kritavaha are uh, Vedic rituals where there are animal sacrifices. Okay. Now, you might wonder, you know, how we are talking about animal sacrifices where what is the primary teaching? Ahinsa. So, there are many, you know, um, what the ideas about this, and you should know some of them. Some people say that it was relevant to the times; it's no longer relevant, so you know we need not do those sacrifices. And some people say that in those way, in that in those Vedic mantras, those mantras which talk, talk about sacrifices, they are not pramanam, so you should not do them at all. Only the rest are pramanam. And some people say that, okay, when you say, when Veda says animal, sac animal sacrifices, Veda means, um, you know, that the animals are not real animals. They are basically uh, forms and forms made of what is called uh, dough. You know what dough is, right? You can make chapati out of it. You can make puri out of it. So forms made of that dough and that dough is what is sacrificed. So they are not real animals. And there are many, 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 many such uh, interpretations. But note that in Brahma Sutra, Vyasacharya says very clearly that where and this, you know, is not easy for us to accept because of the concept of non-violence. But Vyasacharya says that even though Veda says that Ahinsa Paramo Dharma, where Veda specifically prescribes an animal sacrifice, then there is no papam attached. Okay, I leave it to you all. We don't want to enter into discussion of that. So that is a thing which comes about in the Veda, that animal sacrifices were there. Okay. And these sacrifices are basically meant for to indicate. It's an indication that I am transcending my animal tendencies. Okay. Okay. Now, if you remember Bhagavad Gita, Shankara gives totally different meanings for Krato and Yajna. Does anybody remember? The same Shankara who is talking about the fact that Vyasacharya says that these are animal sacrifices and that is okay as long as Veda is prescribing. The same Shankara in Bhagavad Gita, says Krato means, Kratavaha means Shrauta Yajna. Yajna which are uh, prescribed by Veda, while the word Yajna means Smartha Yajna, Yajna which are prescribed by Smritis. So Smartha, not Smart, okay, Smartha. Sm not Smart Yajnas, Smartha Yajnas are prescribed by Smritis. That is what Yajna is. And Kritavaha means Shrauta Yajna. Yes, Yajna is prescribed by Shrutis. This is a different meaning given to uh, given by Shankara in Bhagavad Gita. Ultimately, from our point of view, <coughs> we should understand that there are rituals with animal sacrifices. There are rituals without animal sacrifices. And we should also note that great Acharyas like Vyasacharya and Shankaracharya have said that there is no violation of Ahimsa in the Kratava rituals because it's a prescription by Veda. We just leave it at that. Let us not get further into the discussion until we reach Brahma Sutras, where we'll actually discuss it. Okay. Then the next word is Dikshaha. So there are certain disciplines associated with all rituals. And Dikshaha is is here. This is one of the rituals. For example, you know, in if you have seen some of the rituals, you will find that in some rituals, the yajamana, the person doing the uh, ritual, has to wear a ring 
which is made of darba grass right in other cases there is a thread tied to the waist so all these uh, indicate that i am i am taking a sankalpa before the ritual that i will not get up before the, before the ritual is complete that i am committed to that ritual there are certain so lots of such uh, small small disciplines are there associated with the ritual diksha is also one of them and diksha is the fee the amount of money given to the priest right and shankara says this can start from one cow and can literally go up to your entire wealth why is it necessary to give the diksha to the priest there is a common sense answer what is that when you receive something you have to return in any other manner remember the okay. priest hello what is his position there ravi ji yes sir taji yeah now the priest also has to survive the only way that he can survive is by getting something back there is no other person who will give something <clears throat> if you don't give him that poor chap will perish yes that is of course one thing but remember that the priest is your agent there right he is doing the yagna why because you don't know the veda is it not or you are not eligible to do it otherwise so he is repeating the mantra that you should be doing and therefore normally veda says that the fruit goes to whom the doer to the karta yajamana and therefore no karta and the person ah. who is doing is the priest and if nothing is given to him then the entire benefit of the yagna goes to him and therefore you give dakshina to the priest the priest having re received his dakshina that he has no more phalam to receive the phalam of the doing the puja for somebody else is the dakshina the priest has got his phalam and therefore the yajamana will get the phalam of the of the ritual of the yagna okay so dakshina is very important and if you don't give dakshina it's considered as a tamasik home do you remember bhagavad gita where does it come there is a all forgotten tamasik home where does tamasik home come in bhagavad gita <laughs> 17th chapter no Okay, I'll leave it to y'all. You can just post it in in the in the group, which is the verse where the this where it says that without dakshina the homa is famous. Anyway, so we'll leave it at that. The next word is samvat samvat sarascha. Samvat sarascha means literally means year, one year, three sixty five days. But remember that in the in the in the Vedic tradition. the panchangam something called a panchangam what do you look at in the panchangam what does the panchang panchangam indicate to you we look at it for tithi and tithi vara nakshatra etc okay uh. remember tithi vara nakshatra etc or all measures of time at a particular time and therefore shankara says that samvatsara here can be taken as kala tatvam that is that which is indicating what is the auspicious time for the ritual why because each ritual has got a kala attached kala kala tatvam attached kala kala here is the time it is attached to each ritual like for example sandhya vandanam when is sandhya vandanam to be done at the time of dawn and dusk sandhya is what yeah when there is a shift in the sandhya is a what is sandhi sandhi joining joining sandhya is joining and this is a junction basically so sandhya is the junction of two junctions actually there are three junctions one is night and morning one is day and night and there is a there is a intermediate sandhya also actually between morning and afternoon 
that is why sandhya vandanam actually is done three times so most people do it twice because i mean most people don't do it at all those who do it they do it twice because night and morning and morning and night and the sandhya vandanam means what that ritual is to be done at sandhya it's a very precise time right aditya hridayam when is it to be done when the sun rises and therefore for each ritual there is a kal attached time attached that is that is the main purpose of the panchangam incidentally to tell you what is tithi vara nakshatra so that you know that when i should do my ritual and therefore here shankara says samvatsara is the knowledge of the time when the rituals are to be performed okay then yajamanascha the sacrificer the ritualist the one who follows the ritualistic life remember he should be eligible for example agnihotram agnihotram can be done only by one who has got a patni okay you may be the most eligible male in this universe but if you are not married if you don't have a wife not girlfriend okay if you don't have a wife what is a wife patni is who has been acquired by you in the vedic ritual so if that sanction of the veda is not there for the patni then you can't do agnihotram and there are very many such disciplines so like for example some disciplines can be done by brahmacharis but among them also there are some rituals which can be done by a brahmachari whose hair has not yet turned gray he doesn't should not have a single gray hair okay. so by that definition i would never have been able to do any ritual because my hair turned first hair gray hair came at 21 okay. so this is also one of those <coughs> so you know there are so many rituals are there many practical many not practical but all these are born out of what born out of ishwara one then loka the 14 lokas have been created as a result of what as for what purpose for for your exhaustion of karma and therefore here also lokas is to be taken as karma phalam which means one should know which karma has which phalam and there are two things somo yatra pavate surya yatra pavate where the moon shines and where the sun shines so karma kanda talks about vedic rituals of two types one is karma only and one is karma with upasana so rituals without upasana and rituals with upasana and we saw in bhagavad gita that the plain karmi only I mean the, the upas the sadaka who is a karmi karma sadaka who has, does not do upasana when he dies he takes the krishna gati and when the upasaka who has done karma he dies he takes the shukla gati so therefore there are two paths therefore sobo yatra pavate and surya yatra pavate refers to these two paths which were mentioned in the eighth chapter of bhagavad gita dakshinayan dakshinayan and uttarayan shukla and krishna gati okay. again here i'll mention that earning karma is possible only in manushya loka according to scriptures all other lokas you can only exhaust karma so with this we'll stop for today so few minutes are still left any quest any questions Om sir. Yeah, when uh, when uh, while we say that karma only human beings have, as Vedantins, we also know that karma can limit us. And while we think, I mean, as we go by Shankara's Jnana uh, Karma Samuchaya, we need to give it up to reach the goals of Moksha as Vedantins. I have not, I have not got the gist of your. Like uh, no, I mean to say is that while we are humans and karma is important and we are the only ones who can get karma phalam, it is also important that at some stage we give it up, thinking of 
jnana karma samuchaya that as vedantins for us it is jnanam which is the primary means so um, we i still don't get are you saying that you should drop karma completely no not drop no yeah. that's not possible as we have studied in bhagavad gita also krishna says but uh, the shift should be that uh, instead of giving so much of value to the karma aspect we should look at the jnanam aspect more remember that the greatest of jnanis also yes. do karma shivananda swami yes. does karma all the time right how right. do you explain they prarabdha yeah but it, the your point being that you should focus less on karma and less on and more on on yes. jnana that has yes. to be understood properly okay you right. as long as you think of karma as a sadhana mm. you are in karma kanda mm. when the sadhana shifts to jnana then you are in jnana kanda that is what is what you have to understand right. you cannot drop karma but you have to stop thinking of the fact that karma is going to get me something Right, right. So you can yes, do karma. That's you what I want. Have to do karma. If you're a grahastha, there's no choice but to yes. do karma. If not, yes, yes. fathers. Right. I got it. Thank you. Yeah. Om sir, so the exhaustion of uh, karma happens in, in the jalam body, right? No, no. Exhaustion of karma happens in the fully fleshed body. Once the physical body is uh, yeah, yeah. given. When they 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 go to Swarg Loga or whatever is the the thing thing. happens over there. Your physical body comes here after the in the Panchagni Vidya stage. If we're talking about the physical body is after the fifth agni, Pancha agni. Pancha agni product is the physical body because it comes out of the lady, womb of the girl or the or the mother. So the exhaustion of Punya or Papam happens in the Jalam body. No, that Jalam body is not capable of transaction. Okay. It is meant it is given as a rudimentary body because that's what Shastra says that the moment the first body is gone, the second body is handed over. Why? Because in that second body you will have the blueprint of all the prarabdha karma that has to come from somewhere because that's the that's the very theory, right? That the blueprint is there in the karma sharīram. And karna sharīram is handed over along with this sukshma karana whatever physical body everything comes together when you have a physical body you presume automatically karana and sukshma sharīram but don't think of any exhaustion during the pancha vidya stage that those are just the processing centers om acharya ji so the process of that uh, the the code that is given punarapi jananam punarapi maranam does it include this panchavidya thing also the process all the processing centers see again i'm saying that there are three paths which are followed the person who goes to adhogati adhogati is born as a insect a plant or something he doesn't go through all the five so it is not applicable the person who goes to brahma loka gets karma krama mukti he does not come back so it's not applicable only for those persons who go to swarga and come back only for those jivas this panchagni vidya route gets applicable and that is what he is talking about panchagni vidya here is taken as birth in a human body not adhogati Ravi ji i have a question yes please uh, you mentioned um om udyaya nama om apaya nama all of that before we eat yeah. so that uh, our fire is as good as the five fires no 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 that is just a, you know you are the pancha prana in your body that is the reason mm -hmm. for your living and therefore you are saying that this food i am offering to the pancha pranas and therefore you so om samana yana om rana each, each one of the pranas you name and you say and you give the offering that i am offering it to all of you uh, so don't, don't does confuse pancha agni is 
this pancha fire fire panchagni with pancha prana uh, okay so the brahmarpanam shloka doesn't do that brahmarpanam shloka is you are viewing the food as brahman you are viewing the fire as brahman you are viewing yourself the eater as brahman you are giving everything is brahman that's a different to that's jnana yoga here we are talking about jiva birth we should be very clear about what point what subject is being discussed Okay. All right. Thank you. A little bit um, more maranam is required. Okay, of all, all of y'all. Uh, also, um, sorry, this is just a small follow up about the five things, the five agnis. You said the first is water, the second is cloud, uh, the third uh, is prithvi, the fourth is water. I said first was swarga. Swarga, the second is cloud. Yes. Yeah. So I know. It's going to take. Um, we are not discussing that. I just mentioned it incidentally because because of that you have to understand what the mantra is. So don't pay too much detail into that. Just go write the notes notes down so that you know what is the sequence. In that background, you have to understand this particular mantra because the mantra omits two of one or two of these processing centers. You should not get confused. That is why I gave it the background. But so that discussion what is the relationship? Later. Between those five and the panchagni, the one that you said, the panchagni. Um, I the month all that. In today's, I suggest you go and read. Okay. 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 You go and read. Make notes. And this will stop for today. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamadachate Purnasya Purnamada Ya Purnam Eva Vasishyate. Om Shanti 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 Om Tat Sat Om Namah Shivaya Thank you for your patience Thank you Acharya Thank you Acharya